It is Monday, July 25, 2016. We are pleased to bring you today's edition of the Government News Brief. Welcome. In the news, Finance Minister says nothing's wrong with government reviewing the ExxonMobil contract. Prime Minister says the Rupununi is the new future of Guyana and Guyana to soon get a more effective drainage system. Stay tuned as we bring you the details of these and other stories. Thank you for staying with us. I am Azim Khan. Here now are the details. There is nothing wrong with the government seeking to review the contract signed by the former People's Progressive Party Civic and ExxonMobil for the oil exploration in Guyana's exclusive economic zone, says Minister of Finance Winston Jordan. Kadaki Amsterdam tells us why. Minister of Finance Winston Jordan says the review is natural and is keeping with the fact that the circumstances have changed since the signing of the first agreement. A review does not mean changes, but it involves changes. It can involve, and it does, it can involve change. So you're going to re review the 1999 uh, agreement or the 2006 agreement. This is 2016. Circumstances have changed. Oil has now been found. The minister pointed out that it is any government's right to seek a review of contracts when governments change. Well, you can't get a better deal if you didn't review in the first place, right? We weren't abrogating any agreements or anything. We were just merely asking for a review. And in the spirit, and in Exxon agreed, even when the PVP came into power in 1992, their first talk, and they probably the only talk, was how all the agreements that the then PNC government did, that they were going to review all of them. Meanwhile, the finance minister says cabinet is satisfied and has commended Minister of Natural Resources Raphael Trotman for doing a good job in negotiating the terms of the ExxonMobil exploration contract. Negotiations um, with Exxon have been done at the level of uh, the Ministry of Natural Resources. And let me say I compliment the Minister of Natural Resources for the excellent job that he has done so far. Cabinet has also given him um, the kudos for the work that he has done. Questioned about the Sovereign Wealth Fund, Minister Jordan says the government is receiving much needed help from nationals and non-nationals towards its establishment. I believe by the end of the year, um, we, we will be in a good position to have uh, a working draft, I believe, at the end of the year. We've been assisted by a number of um, um, countries and agencies, Commonwealth Secretariat, I believe, um, United States, Canada. Um, they're all assisting us in that uh, particular area. So we, do, we, we are getting some help, plus concerned Guyanese um, have also been adding their bits in terms of offering help. In May 2015, ExxonMobil declared the find of substantial oil deposits in its exploratory Lisa Well offshore Guyana. It has since completed drilling of a second well, which revealed total deposits estimated to be in excess of 1 billion barrels of oil. Minister Jordan says the company is in the process of drilling a third well, Skipjack, approximately 19 miles from the second. Kidaki Amsterdam for Government News Brief. The government sees the Rupununi as the future of Guyana. Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu is encouraging indigenous peoples to move into agro-processing for sustained economic development. More in this report. We are trying to project agro-processing here and already we are tasting peanut butter from Parishara. We are having uh, some other products coming out of the Rupununi uh, in terms of concentrate, in terms of not only traditional farine and cassava bread, that you have the potentials here of producing world-class peanuts, cashew nuts, that you could can and world-class fruits that you could dry once it is packaged and contained, put in containers, it could be exported to the world which is now facing a shortage of food. Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu told the almost 100 residents of Region 9 at the Bina Hill Institute who met with himself and the Minister of Indigenous Peoples Affairs, Sidney Alicock, that the Rupununi holds the key for a prosperous future for them. The Prime Minister advised residents that government will continue to implement programs to improve their lives, 
but they needed to get on board the process. We just started one year ago and you yourself can look around and see how our communities are changing. The lives of our people are changing, perhaps a little too slow for, to bring satisfaction to us. But we need to, to walk this path one step, one day at a time, and one step at a time so that we can bring lasting changes. Minister of Indigenous Peoples Affairs, Sidney Alicock, said that his ministry has embarked on consultations with those of the 212 indigenous communities to listen to their concerns and determine their needs so that they can be addressed in his 2017 budget. The minister further encouraged residents to organize themselves and work together in putting proposals for the development of their communities. The minister also stressed the need for the development of sustainable villages. A lot of capacity has been built. At least have seen projects of capacity building. We need to see that being practiced now. Because it is an investment that we are making, we need to see results. Pina Hill residents had the opportunity to raise several concerns with the officials, some of which were addressed immediately. Others will be forwarded to the relevant ministries and government departments for action. Paul McAdam, Government News Brief. Guyana will soon benefit from an effective drainage model which will be replicated countrywide as the Netherlands Dutch Risk Reduction Team returns to work with the National Drainage and Irrigation Authority. Renette Lafleur has the details. When the Netherlands Dutch Risk Reduction Team, DRR, visited early in January, they highlighted areas lacking in Guyana's drainage system. Minister of Public Infrastructure David Patterson explains. And in their report, they noted that our response to flood related problems are or have often been reactive after a crisis has occurred. Rather than this crisis driven approach, it was recommended that we adopt a more proactive approach. This means we have to shift from crisis management to a more long term planning in the construction as well as maintenance of our drainage infrastructure. The minister further explains that Guyana's drainage system has been operating primarily on historic knowledge from the operators. This approach was ineffective, thereby resulting in human error. This approach makes our system unsafe as well as inefficient. While we value the experience of our staff, I mean, um, we believe that modernization is very vital in order for us to improve our drainage system. This is the first of the seven recommendations, and this was to upgrade our hydraulic modeling capabilities. This, this present team will therefore work to develop such a model as well as to train and work along with our local engineers to replicate this modeling for other areas in Guyana. Meanwhile, the National Task Force Secretariat, since assuming office, played a key role in addressing drainage and other issues in the country, Minister Patterson points out. What they have done in the year, well, the less than the year that they've been established, they've visited every region. They've compiled a list of all or the major issues within every region. And um, that list is what drives my ministry um, to formulate my budgetary uh, provisions and interventions, you know what I mean, because this is not only drainage, it's solid waste management, um, there's question on, on um, vagrants, um, there's traffic management, you know what I mean, there's a holistic approach. And Over the past few months, technical information including the Georgetown Water and Sewage Master Plan, maps showing catchment areas of Georgetown drainage, and the report prepared by the Ministry of Agriculture following the 2015 flood was shared with the DRR team to prepare the drainage model with accurate information. I am Renette LaFleur with this Government News Brief. The Guyana National Bureau of Standards seeks to have more accredited labs to conform with international standards. Details in this report. Local manufacturers are set to benefit from more accredited laboratories shortly. Products prepared for export will be tested and accompanied by certificates enabling their acceptance on the international market. Head of the GNBS Conformity Department, Candeli Walcott Bostwick explains. Quite recently we would have um, received notification 
like from the U.S. Department, the U.S. FDA, where they will be enforcing certain requirements. We are a local manufacturers, for example, those who deal with the food manufacturing will have to at least have a HACCP system in place, and the laboratories that they use for testing must be accredited. The head of the GNBS Conformity Department explained the HACCP system. HACCP is Hazard Analysis Critical Control Point System, and that is a system that allows a food manufacturer to identify the risk, or let's say the areas we can see of contamination while they're involved in the manufacturing process from the start to the end. One of the GNBS goals of the five-year strategic plan is to emphasize the need for standards to be embraced in the business environment to benefit both the manufacturer and the consumer. The GNBS will be able to operate more effectively and also we'll be able to show how we're better meeting the mission and vision of the GNBS and our primary goals really set out to show how we first working with consumers with industry and stakeholders and for example communicating with them the benefits and the role of the GNBS. The GNBS recently finalized its five-year strategic plan that provides the opportunity for stakeholders to embrace standards since standards add value to the quality of life. The agency is also working towards building quality infrastructure, supporting trade, inspection and certification bodies. For this Government News Brief, Namila Henry Rowe. Youths and facilitators of the Hinterland Employment Youth Services Program in the Pomeroon says their participation is fruitful and exciting. Isaiah Braffitt tells us why. The introduction of the Hayes Program in St. Monica is a major boost for youth development. Phyllis Tushau, James Miguel, explains how it has been benefiting the youth of the Pomeroon River community. Young people that were never used to be seen coming out into meetings, right? they, they are now um, coming up front and they are participating fully. One of them told me this is a very nice program because uh, it makes um, enemies come together. They realize that, especially in a life skill program, it, it is good that they must communicate, associate together as, as one. The train of trainer programs was aimed at helping the facilitators better deliver the module to the participants. Facilitators of the program told Gina that they have benefited tremendously from the training. Nazima Courtman, his facilitator, explains. I've gained more what I've known, and I think I've, I'm delivering it to the participants as a facilitator in capacity building. This program is very important to the youths because now from that time, from what I will see like about six weeks ago to now, I think I've seen improvement. We're on the training at um, Sophia Exhibition Center. We learn a lot how to teach young adults from children. We learn the different techniques, um, we learn different, other different things, we find it interesting. Um, I know that um, the participants are learning and I know they will learn more and they will be successful at the end of the training. Veronese Elliott and Peter Samuels were among the Hayes program students, describing it as very interesting. This program is very interesting so far. We learn a lot and life skills is a very important topic, but for ecotourism, we didn't went on any tour so far, that is the only disappointment and we really want to go on a tour. The other subject, garment construction, yeah, is a subject we have to redo. And for capacity building, it's a very interesting topic too so far. We completed mod beyond module two right now. I will encourage anybody who, who could make it to be here. Because it is very interesting. The Hayes program was developed to positively contribute to improving the lifestyle and living standard for hinterland youth and young adults. Isaiah Braffitt for the Government News Brief. Those are the reports we covered in today's edition of the Government News Brief. The details of these and other stories can be found on Gina's website. We encourage you to stay updated and subscribe to our website and YouTube channel. All government and other information can be accessed from Gina's website. Join us again tomorrow when we bring you another edition of this, the Government News Brief. Thank you for watching.